All right, so I had a couple of people reach out asking me about my talent builds, what I'm running in keys, why I'm running them, and just to give a general, just more information about what I'm doing. So my name is Bendis. I've been playing Feral for a couple of years now. I'm not the best Feral player. I'm not the worst Feral player. I mainly play dungeons and I do some raid. Um, so I would just like to preface this little mini guide by saying that what I'm going to say is from personal experience. This is what works for me. I'm not telling you this is the best. I'm not telling you this is the worst. So take all this information with a grain of salt. And I will be linking down below a link to the Dream Grove Compendium for Feral Druids, which is the best, most used guide for Feral Druids, where you'll have all the information, all the utility, all of your rotations, all you need to know. I'm just going to be doing a quick guide on what works for me in keys and what I've been doing this season. So we're going to start off talking about gear, stats, uh, followed by some trinkets, and then I'm just going to go over some of the builds that I run in Mythic Plus and why they're good and why I would run them. So to begin, a quick recap over gear and stats. Your main stats are going to be crit and mastery. Your mastery is especially going to be very valuable due to our current tier set that increases all the damage that we deal by 20% for eight seconds after we use Feral Frenzy combined with the talent Convoke. So both Convoke and Incarn have value through the tier set and to Convoke a bit more and especially in single target we'll, we'll be able to feel this a lot more. So I have a lot of gear that is more catered towards mastery currently running around 92%. And all of my other crafted pieces are crit and mastery. So crit and mastery on the ring and on the back. Now, in terms of other stats in keys, haste is very good due to the fact that our bleed scale with haste, they tick faster. And versatility is also useful to help you from living through more damage and one shots in higher keys. The It is to the point where Sometimes Bark Skin and Survival Instincts just is not enough. So the fair form isn't enough. And versatility will make it a bit more easy for you to live. In that case, I would potentially recommend I'm going to be recrafting some of my gear to verse mastery instead of verse instead of crit mastery. So specifically a ring and probably this back as well. Now, in terms of embellishments, what you currently want to be running is two times blue silken lining. So this lets you Basically, this basically gives you, I have it right here on the cloak. So what it does is that it gives you a flat chunk of mastery when you're above 90% health, which is really important due to how most of the time, whenever you convoke, you are going to be over and you want to try to make sure that you're over 90% health to get the buff. If you're not, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it does help. Afterwards, what you can do is for most people running two blue silken lining will be best on 10 star it'll all be wrist and back or some other stats some uh, some other slot sorry and so they stack and this basically will help you with your burst and help you during those nice burst windows another option and this is what i'm going to be swapping to next week because this is what seems better for me is that instead of toxic thorn boots which is what i crafted the first week i'm going to be going elemental lariat now you will be seeing that as people gain more stats and more gems specifically not stats elemental lariat might pull ahead of blue silken lining so for me it's already pulling ahead on the gear that i have right now whenever i sim i can see that it is a bit ahead than double blue silken lining so starting next week i'm going to be crafting that and since i'm or i'm still missing two gem slots as soon as those are filled through vault i will effectively just gain even more value from the lariat which is very nice and which is very beneficial for me now depending on what builds we're running our trinket choices are going to be somewhat varied now in most incarnate builds i'd recommend you just run two passive trinkets i am lucky enough to have a mythic pips and i'm running that with a sand glass now you can run pips you can run sand glass you can run porcelain crab i guess you could even run the serpent trinket from volkaros any two passive trinkets work. And if you don't, any two minute trinket, for example, ashes or branch also work very well and, can, and are going to work very well, especially if you are running a convoke build. Now I'm gonna go over it later, but you can either run incarn or convoking keys. If you want convoke, I highly recommend you do run ashes or 
branch due to the fact that you will get a lot more value out of the burst window and it's just going to be a lot easier for you to do their damage and your spikes will be a lot higher and it'll just feel better to play. Uh, you could, of course, run it without it. It just, I don't really see the point in not running Ashes or Branch with Convoke. Now, I think that goes over the Trinket options fairly well afterwards. So there are a couple of builds that you want to run depending on what week it is, what dungeon you're playing, etc. So first off, there was an Incarn Terrapin Wounds build. This is the general build. This is what it looks like. So this build is good because it's uncapped due to Primal Wrath being the main finisher in AoE. Now, that being said, our AoE still is a bit lackluster compared to other classes, but it's not the worst ever. It can't just use a bit of work. Now, what's good with this build is that this is just a really good baseline and it will serve you well in all dungeons, Everbloom, Whitecrest, Black Rook Hold, everything that has a high target count is going to work really well with this specific talent build. Now, afterwards, there is a slight variation that you can do where you take Convoke instead of Incarn, and this will let you... This is what I typically run on Tyrannical Keys. So this gives me... This is about 10k, 10,000 DPS increase over Incarn, at least for single target. For me, it's Tyrannical Keys, and I value that a lot. So even for... As soon as I think that single target damage is going to be very important in a key, I'm going to run with Convoke instead of Incarn. If, for example, you're running with without an evoker and you're running with something like a BM hunter and a demon hunter, you don't need more AOE. They will have that covered just full send on the convoke, full send single target. Now, that being said, you do not want to completely ignore other talents, um, especially Taste for Blood. You can take out Affected Wounds, go Taste for Blood for Tyrannical Weeks. This is something that I will do. And if you're feeling extra spicy, you can get rid of Double Clawed Rake, go for Infected Wounds. And this is also a very viable build that you can run that will have a lot more single target and it your aoe isn't too gimped by the fact that you're not running dcr since you can just manually spread rakes it'll just take you a bit longer and it's still a fairly good option even in uh fortified keys or tyrannical keys it still works very well now lastly there is one last build that i do like to run and that would be a convoke build or an incarnate build but mostly convoke and instead of going to open wound we would go something like this with Rampant Ferocity. So this is a build... Oh, and Vein Ripper. Sorry. So this is what is considered a funnel build, quote-unquote. And this is going to be very good for dungeons, for example. In Dark Heart, I've had fairly good success with it, as well as in the Mega Dungeon, where there are certain mobs that have a lot more health than others that you they just need to be focused down. This kind of makes you into a shittier... What Sub Rogue used to be, where you're just full send this rate an aoe but not really so with this build the way that it works is that you will be just using instead of you will just going to be applying primal wrath so aoe rip which is going to last longer with main ripper and everything is just going to be going for a single target bites that's all you want to do and it will scale onto aoe sadly this is capped to six targets so it's not capped it's soft capped to six targets so it's not going to be ideal but it will still do your job, its job fairly well, even in higher keys and in keys with more AoE. Now, another thing to note is that this build lets you, through the use of Bite, you'll have a lot higher uptime on Sabertooth, which will increase the damage of your rip. And it's about a 20% from experience, around 20% increase, 20 to 30% increase in duration for Sabertooth. So your rip will end up dealing most, more damage. And it's really important that for this build, you go specifically you specifically have to try to get your rip your primal wrath empowered by both blood talents and tiger's fury and if you don't you are going to lose out on quite a bit of dps now these are just the main builds that i use if you're starting off definitely the initial incarn build that just goes for terror open wounds this is going to be what you want to run this is going to be your go-to all the time and Frankly, it is probably the best build that you can run now. There's also another build where you just get rid of Double Clawed Rake. You go for Ramp Frosty. This give you even more AoE. I don't think it's necessary. But again, play around with this. See what works with your team, with your comp, and you'll go from there. Now, lastly, in terms of, for the class tree, this is what I'm going to run basically every dungeon except for the few where I need Remove Corruption. When I need Remove Corruption, get rid of Protector of the Pack, Earth Sand Vigor, Matted Fur, and just go like this. 
and this will get you everything that you need <laughs> for this will get you fairly far i haven't had any issues with this you shouldn't need to take any points in feline swiftness if you really feel like you need it you can get rid of one point in well honed instincts but i wouldn't really recommend it i recommend you just start playing without it and just go for more defensive options and also slight brag i got very lucky with speed speed and speed so i can <laughs> i feel it even less but yeah that's what i'm going for this season and if something changes i'll be sure to update it i'll have links to the compendium as well as the dream grove discord in the description so yeah thank you for watching and happy holidays everyone